Today we're going to be replacing the stock extruder on the CR10 with the all metal one. I'm going to go step by step on how to install this and make sure everything works correctly. So let's get started. Hey everybody, my name is VJ and welcome to SandTube 3D, your best resource for all things 3D printing related. So today we're going to be replacing the stock CR10 extruder with the new all metal one. So I picked this up from Amazon for about 15 bucks. You can actually get it on other websites like Gearbest or Banggood. So these are all the necessary tools you'll need. These Allen keys actually come with the printer. Uh, so you can use those right there. This is the wrench that comes with the printer. Uh, you can use the flathead screwdriver here, uh, or you can use the needle nose pliers. If you don't have these, then I'm gonna, then you can use these. But if you have these, then you don't need this, and I'll show you in a minute. So let's get started. Now this is something that I do guys, you guys don't necessarily have to do this, but I just disconnect all my cabling just so it's out of the way. And this makes it easier for me to get to removing the assembly. All right, the very first thing you wanna do, now if you have needle nose pliers, this makes it easier, which I'll show you in a minute. Basically what we're gonna do is grab onto the spring, compress it and pull it out. But if you don't have that, go ahead and grab your wrench, stick it in there. And the only reason I say to do that is because when you use the flathead to pry the springs out it might kind of shoot out at you so if you're going to use these be careful uh, make sure you have something to hold the spring in place as you're removing it with the flathead but i prefer just to use these because it's so simple you just pop that in there like so and there you are and the spring actually shot out at me because I didn't hold it in place with anything. But once you get that done, you're gonna move on to the next step is we're gonna remove the Bowden tube here. Now you can actually remove the Bowden tube because you're gonna get a new piece, but for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out. But okay, next you're gonna need the Allen keys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this from the motor which is the gear or the teeth. So I've loosened that up and now I'm actually going to go and get this taken off. And once you get this taken off, you'll notice this one will pop right off. There you go. Next, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew these screws right there. Okay, now keep in mind, when you do the last one, your motor is actually gonna drop. So you wanna make sure you hold on to that. So there you go, motor's off. And then this part just pops right off and you're left with just the frame on the CR10. All right guys, so let's since we have everything dismantled, let's go and do some pre-assembly. So basically go and take uh, this part right here where your Bowden tube connects to. Just go and screw it right on in. Now, for those of you that have thread lock, uh, if you want, you can go and put some on here. It will actually help it to stay better connected. Just hand tight should be good right there, guys. Now, I've noticed on some YouTube videos that this sometimes does not come assembled, okay? So what you want to do here is make sure you got the wheel, there's a washer there, and then you got the bolt that goes through, if you look right there. So wheel, washer, bolt, snaps into place, and you can tighten that up. Now, when you tighten this up, don't tighten it too much, guys. Uh, make sure you're able to still spin the wheel like you see here. I can spin the wheel, no problem, so that's good to go. And then we're gonna go and pop this little bad boy right here right into place and then you'll notice you got one big screw and that's gonna go inside there okay so now we can start assembling everything on okay so here we're basically just going to reverse the process guys so that's your uh, mount right there and you got the Bowden tube end on that side you got your motor right there. Okay, so you're gonna be using three screws here. Two will have a top like this. 
and one will actually be flat. And there's a reason for that, and I'll show you why in just a second. All right, so I'm just gonna pop these down into place. Like I said, the flat one, it's gonna go right there. And you're gonna put one on this corner and one at the top left corner. Now, you don't wanna use this one here because that's where our arm's gonna go. But the reason this is flat, guys, because our arm actually comes here. So if you notice, when you try to move it, it has to be smooth, and that's why that side has to be flat. Okay, so once we got everything in place, we're just gonna go ahead and take our motor. And I'm just gonna go ahead and line everything up. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way. But just enough to where it catches. So I have a little wiggle room when I need to move the motor around to make sure the screws catch on and they're not cross-threading. All right, guys, so before we put the arm on, uh, what we're gonna do is you get, you're gonna have a screw right here. This is what's gonna hold the spring into place on this end. Now, all you wanna do is just go ahead and uh, put that in there. Now, this screw is not gonna sit flush. It's gonna stick out a little bit. You don't have to tighten it all the way uh, because the screw is actually gonna go inside here. All right, so you're gonna take the arm and you get the screw right there and that's what's gonna go into the remaining hole. Just gonna pop that into place. All right, you don't wanna tighten that too much, okay? Because we still have to put in the spring. All right, so next we're gonna put this screw, which is gonna hold the spring on that side. Now I'm not gonna bring it all the way out because now I have to actually insert the spring. So here, just gonna pop it into place. I'm gonna hold it down right there by my hand. And now you'll notice that the screw's actually inside and that's gonna hold the spring in place. So, there you go. All right guys, so now that I have everything assembled, I'm gonna make sure I have the correct tension on this right here. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna tighten it up, not too tight, but enough to where the arm still moves. If you have it too tight, uh, that can cause a lot of problems, especially with undershooting down the line. And if you have it too loose, uh, that could also be another issue. So there you go, now that's installed. Uh, what we're gonna do next is adjust the wheel um, or the gear, but to do that, I'm gonna need a little piece of filament. All right, so, so you can see at this point, the filament gear or the teeth that actually pull the filament is not flush with where the filament will be going. So we need to raise it up and uh, make sure that it's at the correct spot so it feeds the filament through correctly. The easiest way to do this, guys, what you want to do is go and get the Allen key that actually fits onto there, put it through where the spring is at. Now, you will not be able to raise it at this point. What you need to do is actually pull the clamp and then raise it to where you want. Now, before I tighten it, if you'll notice where my filament is going, it's actually right in the middle of the teeth. So that's where it's gonna grab. If it's too low or too high, it's actually not gonna grab it. If we would've left it the way it was, it would've been right there and nothing would've been feeding the filament through. So once you have that adjusted or raised, I just pop that in there just to make sure everything is right. And if it's right, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it up. And once you have that done, now when you pull on the lever, the, the gear will not drop. And the only thing left to do now is go and connect our bone tube back up. Is take my bone tube, push that in, and it goes in like so. And that's it. Just a quick side note, guys. Once you get the bone tube in there, uh, make sure that's popped out. And please print these clips. They're free on Thingiverse, and that keeps it open. So this way there's tension on your tube, and it will not pop out. All right, guys. So there you go. Everything's fully assembled, and it's working properly. All right, guys, so there you go. The replacement from the stock extruder assembly to the all metal. It's very simple to do. It takes about five minutes or so. Um, if you've already upgraded this on your 3D printer, let me know what you think. Is it worth the upgrade? Is it not? 
Let's share with the community and see if it's worth the money on, uh, that we spend on these little upgrades all the time. So thanks to all the people that support the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel, there'll be some links down below. You can always buy us a coffee here at Sandtube3D. Or you can become a Patreon uh, on our Patreon page. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button, guys. There's a lot of useful information and tips out on this channel that will be useful to all the newcomers to the 3D printing community. So with that all said, guys, like always, good luck and happy printing.